This demo is going to show you how to use watercolor paint and the blending technique to shade a sphere. Because watercolor paint needs water to work, I am adding some water to those pans first and allowing the pigment to kind of soak up some of that water. This is going to be an orange sphere, but I'm starting with a little bit of yellow pigment, pigment and then I'm going to use plain water to brush over it so it becomes a very transparent yellow over the entire sphere. It's called a watercolor wash when it's mostly water and very little pigment. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow orange in the lid of the paint pan. This is going to be the next layer of value, the next level of value. And as with any type of shading, I'm going to uh, place my brush strokes in a circular motion to follow the shape and the contours. Also with any shading technique, it's really about layering. Here I've used a little bit of plain water to brush over the edge between the first value and the second value that I added. That plain water can help blend. Now it's the next layer of value. A little bit more orange mixed in this time, continuing to work in those circular brush strokes to echo or copy the contours. A little more clean water on my brush to brush over the edge to help blend this value into the previous one. In general, you always want to be mixing your own colors for the most part, not only using it straight out of the pan. As I'm working my way into the shadows, this is where I'm going to work my way a little further down the color wheel towards the cooler colors. Also, because orange can be a little tricky, sometimes I add a little bit of brown in when I'm trying to get into those darker values. Since we're using color theory to shade, of course we want light, medium, and dark, but we also want those warmer colors in the highlights, and we're going to work our way towards cooler colors in the shadow. Clean water again helps to blend and always washing my brush before sticking it in another color so that I can keep my paint pan clean. You might be thinking right now, if we're supposed to use cool colors in the shadows, why am I seeing you use mostly red? But now you see me adding a little bit of purple in. It's not gonna look purple, but just by mixing that purple in, that brings the color that I'm making into a little bit of a cooler tone. That helps to deepen those shadows. So even though it doesn't look like purple per se, purple is mixed in to make that shadow cooler. As I work with the cast shadow, cast shadows are usually some of the darkest values. That cast shadow is made from a mix of orange and red and brown and purple. Adding a little bit more purple, which is going to eventually blend in with the other colors there. Here I've used a teeny bit too much red, so I'm going to try to color correct. Adding a little bit more purple, adding a little bit more water. And then just clean water, plain water to go around the edges to try to uh, soften those edges a little bit. You'll notice that when I add that clean water, it kind of pulls the pigment out. Maybe a little more than I wanted, but here's how you shade a sphere with watercolor paint. 